Good morning guys. I wanted to show you my fencing solution for any kind of herbivore. Not a pig. They're an omnivore. They dig. But for things like sheep, goats, um, what else would be wandering around? That's what we have. Even cows. So if you don't have money for deer fence and big wooden posts and, and that kind of thing, what I do is I take ah. little garden stakes. This one is just rebar. There's my little herbivores coming to say hello. Anyway, I take a little garden stake. This is an existing fence. It is 60 years old. It's woven fencing like this and it was sagging. It's my neighbor's fence and I asked him permission if I could Frankenstein it so that my sheep were not stretching it further. So what I did is I had some antique rolls of more fencing and um, what I did is I took these rebar. I also again have uh, little step-in garden stakes that I've used. I don't love them to pieces, the metal ones I don't love. I like the fiberglass step-in stakes because I can use them for electric fencing. So the little metal step-in stakes, I hate them. I used them for this. What I do is I stick them here on the rebar and I used wire that was from random projects around the property. I save all my wire and I attached it in three different places. And then I take this old woven fencing and I attach it to those rebar. Now this is a fence I'm still working on, so I don't actually have it attached yet. I'll try and find one where I have attached it. Let's see. So this one, you can see that I've attached it to the rebar and I've done that all the way down. In some spots I use chicken wire. Why can I use chicken wire and why can I use this old floppy fence? The trick with herbivores is that if they can't stick their head through and they can't hop over, they won't. They'll stop trying. So this is what I've done. At the spots where they could still put their heads through, I've cannibalized, Frankensteined, old wire, old chicken wire that isn't good for other things, stuff that's maybe six feet long and I hog ring it to the spots where the sheep could get their heads through and try to push through. It's when they can get their head through or when they can see over the top of the fence to think they can jump, that's when they destroy fences. So to all intents and purposes, this is a deer fence and it didn't cost me anything. What I was able to do was take old fencing and old wire from all over the property. I could clean up all this stuff and have it be useful at the same time. As you can see, right here in the head zone is where I put chicken wire. I don't need to put it up here because they're not gonna try and put their heads through up here. Where they're gonna put their heads through is here. So this, this is, this is garden fencing. This is hardware cloth. And then this spot right here is just heavy duty uh, chicken chicken wire. But again, right here where they would try to put their heads through, I doubled up. If I just had chicken wire here and it didn't overlap with other things, they'd push their heads through and they'd still ruin it. So this one I have quite a bit taller. And on this one I used, let's see if I can show you. I used a big, I used a big hog ring instead of other metal, like a wire. And I can show you, I'll see if I can show you where I've done it in other places. Like my favorite fencing is cow panels. But cow panels are, they were $16 a piece when I first started farming. Hi mama. Um, they were $16 a piece when I first started farming, but now they're $28 to $33 a piece. And so I put my cow panels where I absolutely cannot afford to have my animals get out. But in all my other places, 
I try to find another option. For instance, in those spaces where I had less than optimal fencing before, that less than optimal fencing is the fencing I used on the second tier of the deer fencing. So none of that fencing went to waste. It all got used and it keeps my goats in. So let's see if I can show you without the sun. Just see that? This had been the garden fencing I had used to keep poultry in places that I needed them to graze because I couldn't put the goats. See that? That's one of those irritating garden stakes. I put it upside down. I put it upside down so that that triangle would hold it in place a little better. Wired it in three spots. And you can see, I didn't leave any places for them to put their heads through. This garden fencing is overlaid over the top of the woven wire fencing. The actual field fencing has either chicken wire or garden fencing along it all the way down and that means instead of having all these bundles of fencing on my property for people to trip over or to have to store somewhere and have it be super ugly I can put it up on a fence that most people don't notice and most people wouldn't realize that it was a hundred percent free because I just took garden stakes that I hated I took garden fencing that was starting to show its age some of it's in really bad shape I should show you even stuff that's in really bad shape can be used. Now the one place I have damage, the goats tried to get their head through here and there was a little bit of um, damage to the garden fencing that allowed them to get their head through a little bit, but they still weren't able to bend the woven wire fencing because it was there blocking them from getting their head through. The goats aren't going to jump up on this because they've already tested it down low and they couldn't get through. If they test it low and they can't get through, they'll try maybe one time. But if they can't get their head over the top, they assume that they can't get over so they don't even try. So even though this is really wobbly, it's mostly just like a visual deterrent. It works. Alright, another use for old fence or another alternative fencing solution. If you're on a hill, this should look like this because it's very wonky. I'll try and come down here so you can see what it is. This, this is a hill. And if I were to try and put cow panels on it, it wouldn't be straight. It would leave gaps. And this hill has to stay here. It's part of the canal system. And so by crisscrossing, by zigzagging pallets and tying them with baling twine, you can crawl a fence up a hill and it'll keep goats in. See? See how that's at a square angle and tied top? Top and bottom. If you have a spot you cannot get a T-post into, this also works. Because you accordion it so that it supports itself. Alright, I'm just trying to show you guys what has worked so well. I've got one more spot to show you. Um, my favorite is the garden fencing and my favorite is the garden fencing because it's a little bit rigid but you can also use just woven wire fencing again here's this it's at the bottom it's at the bottom that I overlap it up here the goats can't get their head through there's no vegetation here to tempt them it's down here at grass level that they'll try and put their heads through. And again, I just use the 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 fence itself is not self-supporting. It's it's bendy and so you have to have something to attach it to. But I did want to show you down here another use for old woven wire fencing. All right, so this is a this is a roll of fencing that wasn't used. And what we did was clip it in two places where we have a ditch system that would leave too big of a gap underneath the cow panel. 
So what it does is it effectively acts as a very removable um, little gate that you can clip and unclip. We can just unclip it, pop it out when there's water, and then as soon as there's no water, we come back, clip it on, and it drops into the ditch and it keeps the goats from getting out. All right, hopefully that was helpful. I wanted to show you some tips and tricks how to not spend too much money on fencing. If you already have a lot of old fencing laying around, hopefully it was helpful. I'm not gonna show you how I did it. Reason being is it's really hard for me sometimes to spur of the moment, remember that I want to show you guys something, but also have the time to actually get it done. And I have been working on getting more deer fencing put up just because I'm tripping on old fencing and I want to get it up and get it useful before it really gets damaged. And if I think of it, I'll try and find a spot where I'm still working on the fencing to show you how I do it. But I mean, if you've ever done any kind of fencing at all, hopefully the information I've given you is enough because I've got a lot going on right now. This is another use I put my old field fencing to. I line it with chicken wire and then I store things in it. You can see these ones are kind of random bars. <coughs> oh, sheep you scared the crap out of me. Huh. Um, so the, these are my step-in stakes that I really, really like. They're my um, hard plastic and then my fiberglass ones. They're wonderful. I do not use these as the top bracing for deer fence. I use these for electric fencing or to hold up garden fencing for poultry. But these are the cages I make out of them. Um, and this is how I hold my fencing supplies. And I drill, I drill holes in the bottoms of the bucket so they don't fill up with rain. But that way I can just take my fencing supplies out where I need to. I do not throw away baling twine. I use it on too many things. These are some of the things that I'm gutting right now. These are my homemade cages that I made um, like seven or eight years ago. The deer came through one night before I had the deer fence up. The deer came through one night and stepped on them where they were stacked and so they kind of bent. So what I'm thinking to do is cannibalize the wire off of them and use them on my fence. So this is where I hold all my extra wire, my little bits. You see it's just a, a frame made out of pallets held together by baling twine. It's tough enough to hold a bunch of wire when the wire's being stubborn. But there we go. Hopefully you can see it. See how the triangle kind of holds it in place a little bit. Again, this is just an old fence that doesn't belong to me. I had to ask permission, can I turn this into a deer fence? This one has a little bit of chicken wire on it from past escapades, but I want to put another middling range. You can see I'm putting a middling range here. This one needs to be attached better, pressed in and attached. This one looks a little better, but again, <laughs> I'm just working on this piecemeal and I wanted to make sure you guys saw that there are options out there that if you can go to a junkyard and get rebar, and get old rolls of chicken wire. Oh, this is another option. I have a lot of, of pallets around because I make the hotbeds. And when I have the sheep out here grazing, the sheep would eat all this hay. If I didn't make a barrier. Uh, another problem we have is we do have a lot of deer out here and they will come through and they will tear up with their horns the haystack and also eat the hay. Last year I pinned chicken wire to the haystack and that worked really well, but it doesn't keep sheep out. So I'm going to show you what the fence looks like before I doctor it. So this is the condition that this fence is in. It has one, two, three strands of barbed wire and then woven wire that is slumping. You can see that? That's what it looks like. So the sheep will stick their head through and they'll, they'll squeeze it and push on it even more. You can see this side, it's not sagging. 
it's holding up its own weight and it's straightened out a bit and that's because all the layers of fencing support each other and make it nice what are you doing huh you can see over there he's trying to figure out how to get his head through but because I've got chicken wire there he can't get his head through he can graze a little bit sorry he can graze a little bit at the bottom there but he can't get his head through so he can't put any strain on the fence itself so it works perfect all right so this is the chicken wire that i have left that i want to get put up but i need one two three four rebar and i don't have any right now so i need to scrounge some this whole line though does have chicken wire along the whole woven wire fence so the sheep cannot get their head through. They can get their heads over but there's not enough vegetation on that side really to tempt them that much. See? They can't get their heads through because the chicken wire is lining the welded, the woven wire fence, right? They can get their heads over but then what can they get? Just the teeny tiny tips of really dry grass. So this spot is pretty safe. I still want to put it up just because I've got all this um, chicken wire I want to use up. Uh, but I've got to get maybe a little original about finding a solution for my step-in stakes. This is the original garden fence in all its glory. I love this stuff because it's rigid. It won't keep a baby sheep out. It'll keep an adult sheep out who's already been trained to fences. It will never keep goats out, but it keeps geese exactly where you want them. Chickens, geese, ducks, this stuff. It's wonderful. And so are the step-in stakes. In our climate where we have a lot of rocks and our soil turns into concrete, Um, you do have to put the stakes in when your soil is wet in the spring if you don't want it to have issues. I am replacing all of this stuff with either hog panels or cow panels. Uh, hog panels work really well for sheep. Not so great for goats, because they're a little low for goats. But for sheep, they're great. Hey, crazy.